So I'm here at the grocery store, so now all I need is to let them know that I'm here. Looks like I've arrived and I just let them know my parking spot, my car, color, and that's it. They'll be here. So yeah, it's been a crazy past few months and honestly a crazy uh, past year for me and my family in particular. Um, some of you already know the sad news, but um, I did lose my father um, last month. Oh, I think they're here. I think they're here. Hi. You're about to tell me. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm all right. What's the name of the order? Abba. And have you seen the substituted items? Yes, I have. They, they look All good. Right. Would you like me to sign for you? Sure. All right. And is this going in the back seat of the trunk? Yeah, going in the back seat. Thank back you. Back seat? Yeah. Got it. Sorry, sorry, in the trunk. I the meant trunk? the trunk. The trunk? Okay. <laughs> so as I was saying, my father passed away earlier last month um, after uh, fighting um, multiple myeloma. And also he had heart issues as well because it ended up affecting his heart. So it's been a pretty a tough year, but uh, we have peace. God has given us peace. And so right now is, you know, just moving forward. But I would also like to say thank you to all those of you who've sent um, just words of encouragement. We've greatly appreciated them. In fact, it's made the whole grieving process a lot easier stories of my dad as a professor in the UAE um, all those stories just make everything so much easier to bear so thank you so much work has always been work has been m very manageable actually um, hands up and kudos to the therapists who have to go there uh, have to go to the clinic setting because they're the ones treating the patients on the machine so they have to be there hundred percent of the time um, for me, I have to be there at least 50% of the time um, and I do get to work from home if I'm not needed in the clinic. We wear masks and uh, if we're working directly with a patient, we have to wear face shields and masks. So that's how it's been for us. So I know in all my videos, I've mainly been talking about external beam radiation therapy where the radiation comes from a linear accelerator or this big machine from the outside into the patient. But there are also other forms of radiation therapy where the radiation is given to the patient in the form of, say, an injection, a drug, or a seed that is ins inserted into the patient. This is where Alara comes in. Alara, as low as reasonably achievable. Oftentimes, as a physicist, I also have to handle these radioactive sources. Imagine an apple, and the apple contained radioactive seeds inside it. Well, what's the best way to handle this apple? Alara. What does that mean? It means don't spend so much time handling this apple as if it was your best friend and as if it was doing nothing to you. No, you want to limit your time around this apple. Time. The next aspect is distance. You really want to give space between yourself and the apple, just so that you're minimizing the radiation that you're receiving. Distance. The third aspect is in shielding. What can I do to protect myself from the radiation of, the, of this apple? Well, I can wear, say, leaded gloves. I can wear a leaded apron to protect the rest of my body. That's shielding. So we have looked at three different factors here. Time, distance, shielding. These are the three most important factors to consider in Alara, as low as reasonably achievable. So in this COVID crisis, I see this as a perfect analogy. With COVID, you wanna reduce your time around people who might have COVID. You wanna distance yourself from people and you also want to shield yourself, protect yourself with masks, protective gear. It's 
analogous, so I feel like we really understand this concept in my field. Not to brag, but you know, yeah, I'm kind of bragging, but we, yeah, we kind of know it. Don't forget to subscribe.